Justice League Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number one. Written by Tom Taylor, art by Stephen Byrne, and Eduardo Nunez. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Sorry if I'm rusty. I've been waiting for this comic since Tom announced it months ago. So Angel Grove is now a smoking crater with everyone dead because of Zack. Wait, what? But Superman flies in to tell him that it's not his fault. Wait, what? Okay, let's rewind. 36 hours earlier, after a decoy alpha blows a hole in the command center, Zack and Lord Zed are teleported to another world, where Zack fights Batman, where Zack fights Batman, thinking he's one of Zed's monsters, before the rest of the Power Rangers show up. Batman holds his own, but of course, there's six Power Rangers to his one Batman, and he didn't have prep time. However, Flash comes and helps, but it's Batman, so he decides to use the Batmobile to try blowing them up. Yeah. But Kimberly, the Pink Ranger, summons her pterodactyl and... Oh, come on, that is the panel you're going to leave off on? Okay, okay. So trying to not be spoilerific in my recap section is a bit of a bust on that. But it is a, let's get these guys together and then some action. So the plot isn't exactly huge, at least in this issue. It's definitely written for a trade read. However, what we do get is pretty cool, actually. I do hate when comics start in the future and then do the whole, but the main plot is in the past, so this is just a way to tease you. But here, it actually works for me. See, with this bit of the character focus on Zack in just the first couple pages, it actually opens up the fact that this isn't going to be something like the Robotech Voltron crossover I'm doing on a comic a day starting Saturday, where it's just going through the motions solely to combine these two franchises so there's explosions. This actually shows that while there are going through the motion bits, like the who are you, let's fight, that happens, which is handled well, I'm not saying it's not, but Tom as a writer is fantastic, not when he's working plot. Let's be honest, most of his comics are not complex plots that keep you guessing. Though I would love to see a tailor-made mystery comic. No, no, Tom Taylor knows characters, or rather, he knows how to use characters to motivate the plot. Injustice may be my go-to answer for everything he does, but he took a simple plot of, okay, Soups is truly a dictator and evil in five years, go have fun with that, and made it into something super huge based solely on the characters and events, altering the characters enough to continue through a new trajectory. Or if I don't want to sound pretentious, the plot affects the characters, but the characters are the stories being told. And here is no different. By having this shot of the future, we know the stakes for this comic are going to be Angel Grove levelingly dangerous, and the focus on it being Zack's fault means that we do have a character to see how the plot affects them. Plus, I like the fact that he actually brings up that Zack's late to the command center because he and his parents were arguing about where he kept disappearing off to. The fact that your son dresses only in black can't help that wondering either. So, the writing is awesome. But what about the art? Well, I'll throw up just one of the preview pages and you can see it for yourself. The art is sweet. The colors are rich and vibrant without ever going cartoonishly over the top. That paired with smooth line work really makes this a beautiful looking read. Well, let's be more specific on that. That's what the Power Ranger universe looks like. It could just be my experience with the characters, but the Rangers look to be going for more realistic. But the Rangers seem to be more drawn realistically, where when we hop to Gotham and the DC universe, the art comes off as a bit more comic booky and the top standard for DC Comics. Again, this could just be me, since Batman can't really be blacker than black at this point, and the coloring on the pterodactyl zord at the end is different than the Batmobiles. I'm probably just overthinking this, but Stephen Byrne and Eduardo Nunez do knock it out of the park art-wise for me. So, top marks there. Again, the only real negative that I can say, and that's only because I'm me, is that it seems to be trade-written. But I do have a lot of fun reading this, and I'm definitely going to be following the series. So my official stance is that you should totally go out and buy this issue. The art is great, the writing is great, and I do hate to say it, but come on. It's the Justice League meeting the Power Rangers. The Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, mind you. Why wouldn't you want to own a physical copy of that so that in 10 or 15 years when Tom Taylor is being talked about like Grant Morrison or Warren Ellis, you can go to a con he's at and have him sign it. But on that hopefully prophetic and not pathetic statement, that's all for today. Links to Comixology where you can buy it digitally is in the description below. If you do buy it from them, thanks to me, let them know. Maybe one day they'll help a brother out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other channels. Again, links in that are in the description too. And we now have a Patreon, which is in the description below. Tons of reasons to become a patron, but at least check it out. And as always, stay golden, Inklings. Thank you.